All right, today I have five action items for you because in the cutthroat world of startups where every new entrepreneur is biting at the heels of the established giants, the golden ticket is not just to survive, but to thrive. That's a concept as old as Converts itself, yet is frequently overlooked as fine print in a rapidly signed contract. Now, we're talking about the art and the science of understanding customer needs so deeply that you're not just answering their questions, but you're also responding to the questions they haven't even thought to ask yet. Think about that for a moment. So action item number one is decode customer desires now. And you're probably thinking, right? Okay, but how do you do that? Well, the good news is that it's easier than you might think. Now, picture this, right? Imagine that you're navigating, let's say the downtown streets of a bustling city market. Maybe your, your favorite downtown area. Each seller is fighting for your attention. Yet it's the one who pauses, looks you in the eye, and then asks what you're really looking for, who makes you stop, right? This is the business owner who doesn't just sell you a product, Right? They sell you a solution to a problem that you didn't realize was solvable. It's in this essence of understanding customer needs that, that go beyond the superficial. Think about that for a moment. But that said, welcome to Startup 3. I'm Gary Smith, and this is the roller coaster ride of my channel, or should I say our channel. And I want to serve as your guide, your resource, as we walk through the early stages of your entrepreneurial journey, armed with actionable insights proven steps and the kind of advice that, well, you wish you had, right? From day one all the way to, to year three, as we go through the trenches of building your business. Now, this is the only time in the video I'll ask, but if what you see here resonates or, or strikes a chord or offers you a fresh perspective, hitting that subscribe button is the best way to really keep this truly unruly caravan rolling. Now, let's dive back in. Remember the downtown business owner who sold you a solution to a problem that you didn't realize was solvable? Okay, apply that strategy to the digital landscape where startups live and die by the click. In this world, right, the currency isn't just goods and services, it's empathy, it's insight, and the ability to anticipate. It's about knowing your customer better than they know themselves. But here's the kicker, right? This isn't just some, well, altruistic endeavor. It's the most selfish thing that you can do because in the end, the deep understanding of customer needs, it doesn't just satisfy them. It turns them into evangelists for your brand, right? They become the, the living, the breathing, the tweeting embodiment of your marketing campaign. So as you set forth, right, on your entrepreneurial odyssey, remember your product, your service, it's only as good as the need it meets. So dive into the data, of course, but also dive into the human story behind that data, right? What makes your customers tick? What keeps them up at night? Answer these questions and you're not just selling something, you're providing a lifeline. You feel the difference? Now, in this process, you're, you're not just building a customer base, you're building a community, right? That's the secret sauce. That's the magic ingredient, the, the untold success story behind every startup that's made it from the garage all the way to the global stage. Now, action item number two reveals to us that the next big thing is always just one pivot away. The buzzwords, they fly thick and fast, but if you cut through the jargon, the hype, and the endless sea of pitch decks, you'll find a truth that's unvarnished like a dive bar's floor. The real secret weapon in your sales arsenal isn't your technology. It's not your marketing budget. It's not even your coffee-fueled hustle. It's something far simpler, yet infinitely more complex. So action item number two is personalize and customize your sales approach. And let's get real for a moment. In an era where consumers are, let's face it, they're bombarded by ads, right? Like pigeons in a park swarmed by toddlers with breadcrumbs. The average product has about as much chance of standing out as, well, a snowflake in a blizzard. That is, unless it speaks directly to them in their language, about their needs and even their pet peeves. So just while well, slapping a first name on an email blast or segmenting your market with the finesse of a sledgehammer, uh, it's not about that. It's about crafting your message, your product, even your user experience to fit the customer like a tailor-made suit. So think of it as the difference between 
receiving a generic gift card and, well, a carefully, uh, carefully chosen gift, I would say. Something that, that screams, I get you, right? One goes in the junk drawer, the other one ends up maybe on the mantelpiece in a, in a place of honor, right? So it's not just a sales technique. It's a statement of intent. It says, we see you, we hear you, right? And we're here to give you what you didn't even know you needed. But here's the rub. Achieving this level of personalization often requires more than just data analytics and market research. It requires empathy, creativity, and the willingness to listen and adapt. It's about building a relationship with your customers where they're not just passive recipients, but they're active participants in the creation of your product or service, right? In this dance, feedback is your rhythm and agility is your grace. So as you hustle, as you code, as you dream your way to startup success, remember that in a world of endless choices, the one thing that will make your product or your service stand out is how well it reflects the unique needs and the desires of your customers. Because in the end, the companies that succeed, well, think about it. They're the ones that understand that personalization, it isn't just a strategy. It's the very soul of modern business. Now, that brings us to action item three, which rolls us right into the high octane do or die world where every player is gunning for the throne with the zeal of a medieval knight and the subtlety of a bull in a china shop. And from that emerges a concept that's, that's so fundamentally counterintuitive that it might just be the most revolutionary strategy of all. So action item number three, building trust through transparency and integrity. It's a notion that flies in the face of the, the cloak and dagger smoke and mirrors world where complexity is often mistaken for strategy and where fine print might as well be written in invisible ink. I'm sure you can picture some examples. Here's the kicker. In an age where every slip up, every misstep, every faux pas is just a viral moment away from becoming the next big PR nightmare, the currency of trust is more valuable than ever. It's the lifeblood of any lasting relationship, more so in the short-lived dance of consumer courtship where loyalty is fleeting. Let's face it, skepticism is the default. Building trust isn't about grand gestures or maybe overgrown promises. It's about showing up day in, day out with a commitment to transparency that's as clear as glass and integrity that's as solid as the bedrock. It's about admitting mistakes, not with a whisper, but with a shout and a plan for making things right. It's about pulling back the curtain, right, on your processes, on your challenges, and even on your failures. Not as an act of, of self-flagellation, but as a declaration of your humanity. Because here's the thing, in the startup ecosystem where the, the next shiny object is always on the horizon, and loyalty, well, it's as scarce as a, a unicorn in a field of horses, the act of building trust through transparency and integrity is a, well, it's akin to planting a flag in the ground and saying, here we are, here we stand, warts and all. It's a statement that in a marketplace flooded with options, you're not just another choice. You're the choice for those who value honesty over hype, substance over style. So as you embark on this journey that's, that's laden with dreams and driven by ambition, remember that wall innovation may capture imagination. It's trust that wins hearts, right? And in the end, it's the hearts that you win, not the minds that you convince that will transform your fleeting startup into a lasting legacy. Think about that. Now, in this digital age where the average human attention span is, let's face it, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of that of a goldfish with a smartphone addiction, leveraging technology for enhanced customer engagement isn't just a clever tactic. It's the equivalent of bringing a flamethrower to a candle fight. And in this, well, sprawling, chaotic bazaar that is the modern marketplace. Technology is a secret sauce, the magic wand, the cheat code that can transform the mundane into the magnificent, turning passive observers, let's say, into active participants in the grand drama of your brand. Now that brings us to action item four, which is engage more with tech. But let's kind of cut through all the, all the techno babble and the, the Silicon Valley hype for a moment. We're, um, we're not just talking about bombarding your already overwhelmed audience with more emails than there are stars in the sky. 
or more notifications than a teenager gets on Instagram five minutes after posting a selfie. No, no. <laughs> Leveraging technology for, for customer engagement is about using the tools at our disposal to create genuine connections. In other words, to tell a story that resonates and to offer value that is undeniably as it is expected. Now, imagine for a moment, if you will, a world where your gadgets know you better than you know yourself, where your preferences, your dislikes, and your deepest, darkest desires are anticipated with the precision of, of say, a, a Swiss watch in this world, technology, it, uh, it isn't a barrier between you and the customer. It's a bridge, right? From AI-driven personalization that, that makes every interaction feel like a conversation with an old friend to VR experiences that transport your customers to worlds beyond their wildest imaginations. The potential is limitless. But here's the rub. To really embrace the latest and greatest, it's easy to forget. The technology is a tool. It's not the end itself, right? The goal isn't to dazzle with digital wizardry, but to use that wizardry to forge deeper, more meaningful connections. It's about enhancing the customer experience in ways that, well, are thoughtful, are engaging, and above all, human. So as you navigate the treacherous waters of the startup world, remember that the true art of leveraging technology for customer engagement lies not in the complexity of your tools, but in the simplicity of the connections they enable. In the end, it's not the technology that will be remembered. It's the experiences that the technology creates, the moments of delight, the stories that stick. And in those stories, in those moments, lies the key to not just capturing attention, but capturing the heart. Because here's the thing, in the early stages of entrepreneurship, every day, feels like a mad dash between groundbreaking innovation and an inherent crisis, right? Fostering a culture of continuous learning and improvement. It's not just a nice to have, is it? It's the oxygen that keeps the fire burning. It's also where we find action item five, which is master continuous improvement. It's also what separates the fleeting meteorites of success from the enduring stars of industry. In this high stake poker game, Resting on your laurels is the equivalent of, of folding with a royal flush in hand. Now, the landscape is littered with the carcasses of those who thought they had it all figured out, only to maybe later be blindsided by the next wave of innovation. But let's get one thing straight. This isn't just about cheesy motivational posters that adorn the walls of corporate America proclaiming excellence, right? It's not an act, it's a habit, no. Fostering a culture of continuous learning and improvement, it's about embedding a mindset into the very DNA of a startup. The relentless pursuit of better, right? Better products, better services, better customer experiences. It's about creating an environment where failure isn't just tolerated, but it's celebrated as a stepping stone to greatness. Where every team member, even if it's only a team of one or two, is both the teacher and the student. Imagine. Just for a moment, imagine if your business, where the status quo is treated with the same disdain as last season's fashion, where innovation isn't just the domain of a select few in R&D, but the collective responsibility of every team member, no matter the size. In this world, feedback loops are tighter than a drum skin, and the adaptability is the name of the game. Now here, learning isn't just confined to the occasional seminar or the workshop, but is woven into the very fabric of daily operations, from that morning stand-up meeting to the debrief at every project. Here's the clincher. Fostering this culture isn't just about ensuring that your startup can navigate the treacherous waters of the market today. It's about, well, it's about equipping you and your team with the skills, the mindset, the agility, to face challenges that they haven't even thought of or haven't even merged yet. It's about building a legacy of innovation and resilience, a relentless pursuit of excellence that will stand the test of time. So as we wrap up our journey through the myriad of sales success stories and the winning techniques for building lasting customer bonds, let's remember that at the heart of every great startup is a commitment to continuous learning and improvement. This commitment, Write this down. This commitment is what enables us to not just meet the needs of our customers, but 
to really anticipate and shape their desires for tomorrow. So as you venture forth, as you write your own success story, keep the flame of curiosity bright. Foster a culture that prizes growth. Never forget that the path to greatness is a journey. It's not a destination. And with that, I encourage you to go out there, make your mark on the world, transform challenges into opportunities, form lasting bonds with your customers, and build a legacy that resonates. Remember, the only limit to what you can achieve is the extent of your ambition and your willingness to learn. So until next time, keep pushing boundaries and breaking new ground. Mm -hmm.